All right. So you know how we're always saying we like to dive deep. Well, this episode you sent over, this one's uh, this one's pretty intense. Ten months of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict all packed into one podcast. We've got our work cut out for us. Definitely complex, but that's why we're here to break it down, right? Exactly. We're looking at the conflict in focus, hosted by Sarah and Adam. And let me tell you, they don't hold back. So we're going to unpack their take on things and really pull out the most important stuff for our listeners. And one thing I will say for Sarah and Adam, they make it very clear right off the bat that understanding this conflict, like really understanding it, means going back way back. Yeah, they jump straight into the deep end with the events of 1948. Which makes sense because that's where it all begins. The creation of Israel, the displacement of Palestinians, what they call the Nakba, it's all rooted in that history. So for those who need a little refresher, could you give us the crash course? Basically, 1948 is when Israel was established as a nation. But it wasn't as simple as drawing a line on a map, unfortunately. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced from their homes. A lot of people weren't too happy about it. And that tension, well, it never really went away. And that's what makes this conflict so so complicated. It's like you can't just jump into the middle of the story. Exactly. And that's really what Sarah and Adam do such a good job of explaining how the consequences of that displacement are still playing out. The West Bank, which is still under Israeli military control, the Gaza blockade, the lack of progress in peace talks. Hmm. All of it stems from that history. It's like trying to understand a book without reading the first few chapters. And in this case, it feels like those first chapters are still being written. And that's the thing. For both Israelis and Palestinians, this isn't an ancient history. It's their present reality. And the thing is, this isn't just some, like, history lesson, you know? Right. This is very much about the here and now. Exactly. Sarah and Adam were really clear about that, especially when they were talking about the last 10 months. Yeah. Violence has been, well, it's been escalating pretty dramatically. Yeah. It's impossible to ignore. And they kept coming back to two places in particular, right? The West Bank and Gaza. Those are the hot spots for sure. I mean, that's where everything we've been talking about, the historical tensions, the political realities, it's all kind of colliding. And exploding in some cases. So let's start with the West Bank. They talked a lot about this surge in Israeli military raids, especially in Jenin and Nablus. Mm -hmm. We've all seen the images on the news. But what exactly triggers these raids? Well, this is where it gets really complicated, right? Because you have two very different narratives. And probably neither one is telling the whole story. Right, exactly. Israel argues, and they argue this pretty forcefully, that these raids are about counterterrorism. They're targeting groups they say are actively planning and carrying out attacks. Groups like Islamic Jihad, which has gotten a lot stronger in the West Bank recently. OK, so from their perspective, it's about preventing violence, keeping people safe. Exactly. They see it as a matter of national security. But then you talk to Palestinians and they say, these raids are just like a constant threat. And that they're not always discriminating in who they target. Right. They feel like they're being collectively punished. Like just living under occupation isn't hard enough already. And it's hard to ignore the civilian casualties, you know, innocent people getting caught in the crossfire. And that just feeds the cycle of violence. Exactly. Because then you have more resentment, more anger, and that creates the conditions for more violence. And it just, it's a vicious cycle. And tragically, it's the same story in Gaza. Sarah and Adam didn't sugarcoat it. They were very upfront about the constant back and forth, rocket fire from Hamas, airstrikes from Israel. And the human cost is just devastating. Both sides say they're defending themselves, that they have no choice, but... But the people who pay the price are often the civilians, especially in Gaza. Right, they're trapped. And the podcast, they actually bring up how several human rights groups like Amnesty International, they said they're really worried about the number of civilian casualties in Gaza. And then there was that incident at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It felt like the whole world was watching. April 2023, I remember it like it was yesterday. And it was during Ramadan, which just made everything so much more <laughs> intense. Yeah. So you have Israeli police entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Now, this isn't just any mosque. This is one of the holiest sites in Islam. So you can imagine how that went over. Exactly. Israel, their side of the story is that they had intel that there were Palestinians with weapons inside and they were trying to prevent a larger, more violent incident. So they felt like they were acting defensively. That's what they claim, yeah. But for Palestinians, this was a huge provocation. They saw it as a violation of their holy site, especially during Ramadan. And honestly, a lot of people saw it as a power play by the Israelis, a way to assert control. And of course, things escalated from there. Like always. And it seems like, if anything, the situation is getting even more 
I don't know, fragile. Mm -hmm. Because Sarah and Adam talked about this big shift in Israeli politics. Right. Netanyahu is back in power, but more importantly, he's got the support of some pretty far-right politicians. People like Ben Javier and Smotrich. Exactly. And those guys. They are not known for their moderate views. And it's not just talk, right? Mm -hmm. These guys, they're all about action. Especially when it comes to those settlements in the West Bank. Oh yeah, they don't even try to hide it. Ben Gavir and Smutrich, they've both been, well, let's just say, they've been very vocal about wanting to expand those settlements. And they're in a position to actually do it now. Exactly. And that's what has a lot of people worried, including a lot of Israelis, because that just adds fuel to the fire. And then there's the whole thing with settler violence, which Sarah and Adam brought up. And honestly, I feel like that phrase, settler violence, it kind of downplays how bad it's gotten. Well, it's not exactly a walk in the park, that's for sure. We're talking about attacks on Palestinians, vandalism, destruction of property, even physical assaults. And it's happening more and more often. And it makes you wonder, like, is this just, you know, a few bad apples? Or is there something more going on? That's the question, isn't it? Sarah and Adam seem to think it's definitely something to keep an eye on. And with all of this going on, this shift to the right, the violence, the lack of trust, it makes you wonder if that two-state solution, the one everyone's been talking about forever, is there even a chance of that happening? It's not looking good, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Every time you think things can't get more complicated, something else happens. And in the meantime, it's the people who have to live with the consequences. So what does all of this mean for Palestinians? Like, on the ground? Well, the podcast played some interviews with Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza, and you could hear the frustration in their voices. They feel like they're being squeezed from all sides. It's like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Exactly. The settlements are expanding, which means less land and resources for Palestinians. And the political situation, let's just say it's not giving them a lot of hope. And in Gaza, hmm. I mean, they're still under that blockade. It's like right. a humanitarian crisis waiting to happen. It's already happening. Sarah and Adam, they made a good point about this. It's easy to forget about Gaza because it doesn't always make the headlines. But the people there, they're struggling to get basic necessities, things like clean water, food, medicine. It's just, it's awful. Hmm. And then you look at the international community, the rest of the world, and you hope that maybe they'll do something, right? You'd hope so. But, but it's been mostly talk. Like the U.S., they say they're concerned, especially about some of the stuff Netanyahu's been doing to the courts, you know, trying to limit their power. Which caused a huge uproar, by the way, even in Israel. Oh, yeah. People were furious. And the U.S., they weren't too happy about it either. But they're still, you know, Israel's biggest ally. So no real consequences. Not really. And Europe, same thing. They condemn the settlements. They say it's not helpful, but... But no one's actually doing anything to change things. Nope. And that's part of the problem. And then on top of all of that, you have the divisions within the Palestinian leadership. Right. Because it's not like they're all on the same page either. Not even close. You've got Fatah in the West Bank, Hamas in Gaza, and they don't really get along. So trying to present a united front, good luck with that. It's like every time you think you understand what's going on, you realize there's another layer, another faction, another historical event you need to know about. It's overwhelming. It is. And Sarah and Adam, they were honest about that. This is a really, really tough one. It is. But even though this deep dive was tough, even though this episode you sent us was a lot to process, it's important, right? Oh, absolutely. Because it's easy to get lost in all the politics, all the history, all the back and forth. But at the end of the day, this is about people, real people who are living through this every single day. That's what it always comes back to, doesn't it? And that's what Sarah and Adam, that's what they did so well. They reminded us that this isn't just some abstract political debate. This is about lives human lives so yeah it's complicated it's messy and honestly it's pretty depressing at times but we can't look away 